What is up, successful dropouts? I just felt like jumping on the mic really quick here and just talking about some stuff. Not sure what that's going to look like yet, but here it goes. Well, I, I do. Like, there's there's a couple things I, I want to go over, but, you know, I don't know. I've gotten to the point where I really just like sitting here and chatting to you guys about what's going on in our lives and what we're doing. And apparently you guys are interested to hear about it because the downloads keep coming in and I, I keep getting comments from you guys. And, you know, I, I do think, like, I find it interesting to follow other people's lives pretty closely, especially people that I aspire to be like or that I admire in some way. And so, you know, it's funny, you just, the, the most random dumb details that they share about their lives are just really interesting. And I, I find myself listening to their their podcast or reading their blog, um, stuff like that, because I'm just genuinely interested for whatever reason in what they're up to with life. You know, you have to balance that out with, you know, you got to live your own life and uh, have that self-direction too. You don't want to copy, uh, just be a copycat, I, I guess. It's not a recipe for success. But um But it is really interesting following what other people are up to. And I'm sort of noticing that effect with the successful dropout crowd. And uh, that's pleasing. Like I'm 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 super stoked about that. And I'm glad that my successful dropout journey, if you will, is inspiring you guys and is at least (laughs) at the very least kind of interesting to listen to. Um, Speaking of which, I'm trying to think of anything interesting that's happened in the last couple weeks. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff, but it's not really coming to mind at the moment. Um, Where I live here in the mountains, it's currently very rainy, and that's exciting because it means snow is soon to follow, and I'm going to be doing a crap ton of snowboarding. You better believe it. I'm going to be out there as much as humanly possible. Um, Let's see. What else happened? Well, I guess yesterday was Halloween, and I didn't do anything except uh, we just watched a, a scary movie. What movie did we watch? Oh, it's called The Invitation. Um, I I would recommend it. I would actually recommend it. It's on Netflix, called The Invitation. If you're into horror movies or, or thrillers, this one was a little slow at points. I wouldn't call it like a, I guess I wouldn't call it a thriller, or really a horror, but it definitely belongs in that genre, and it, it, it like, you hold your breath, you know, it, it uh, gets your attention. Um, anyways, The Invitation, I, I would uh, recommend that. Um, let's see, as far as, let's see, I started reading a couple new books. Um, I have this really bad habit of starting to read books or listen to them on Audible, and then I get maybe, like, 75% of the way through them, and stop. And so the latest one was pour your heart into it. Actually, I think I'm just a couple of chapters from the end. So pour your heart into it is Howard Schultz, um, CEO of Starbucks, his uh, autobiography and shout out to SD member Andrew Schneck out there for sending me that copy. It was an amazing book. But again, I'm like, I'm like two chapters short of finishing it. And I keep telling myself, oh, I need to go back. I need to go back. But it's like, I already know how it's going to end. You know, like Starbucks is really successful. I feel like uh, the parts that are really applicable to my life are where he's talking about how hard it was and all the struggles and challenges he had to get through. And he's kind of past that now. So it's like, ah, maybe he doesn't have anything more to teach me. <laughs> but that's, that's probably wrong. Um, I started... Uh, oh, and then I find myself going back and listening to books over and over again. Um, and two of those have been As a Man Thinketh by something Allen. Uh, and the other one is Tony Robbins, uh, Unleash the Power Within or Unleash the Giant Within, something like that. Um, those two are just great. And, and in fact, in the Tony Robbins book, one of, I, th- you know, you read a book and just FYI, if you ever feel like you read a book and you've retained almost nothing, you're not alone. I I think that happens to the majority of us. But typically, you t- you can take away anywhere from one to three things from a good book that you really don't forget. And um, at least that's the case with me. And with Tony Robbins, this, this book, the biggest takeaway that I've always had with this book is 
this exercise of writing down your positive and negative beliefs about yourself. And it's a really powerful exercise. In fact, I remember the first time I did it, which was a couple of years ago now, I, it actually got me kind of emotional. And if, if you know me, that's, uh, it's, it's pretty hard to do. Tony Robbins, man, like Tony, Tony Robbins just gets me emotional in general, to, to be honest, because um, I've watched his documentary on Netflix, I Am Not Your Guru, twice now, and both times I, I cried, like, like just a little bit, you know, it's a, it's a good one. I would definitely recommend that if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, I'm recommending a lot of uh, Netflix shows today. Um, but the biggest takeaway from this book, yeah, was this practice of writing down your positive and, and negative beliefs, your limiting beliefs. And it's a, it's quite an amazing exercise. So literally, all you would do is go like open up a Word document or find a piece of paper and a pen and write down, just think to yourself, what are the positive things I believe about myself? And go write those down. Now it might be, you know, I, I think I'm good looking. I think I'm good at writing. These are things that are going to, you know, people have told you your whole life, like you're good at things and you're bad at things. And so <laughs> these are the beliefs that you form about yourself and these are what will end up on the page. Um, the ones that are positive are not very hard to, to write down. You know, these are things that you may dwell on quite a bit, actually, because um, it's obviously pleasing. But the negative beliefs about yourself, you have to dig a little deeper for that. And it's really, it's really, really eye opening. And so you start writing these down and it's beliefs like I somewhere deep down inside, I believe that I am never going to be as successful as this person I looked up, uh, look up to, or this person I look up to, or I, I don't know. I, I'm sure you're, you're thinking of some right now. And that's, that's the thing is there's a big difference between thinking it because we think it all the time to the point where it's almost subconscious, right? Where we're not con consciously thinking like I am now thinking a negative belief about myself. Uh, a lot of it's subconscious and just happens without us being able to control it. But I'm sure as you're listening to this now, just start thinking about some of the negative things that you believe about yourself and some of the, the negative self-talk that's pretty consistent in your life, um, negative thoughts that you have. But it's, it's one thing to do that and then another to go actually write it down and to see it written down. And this is one of the reasons why I think journaling, for example, is so powerful is because you're just regurgitating your you're uh, yeah, regurgitating all this stuff up on a up on a page and getting it out of your head. And once it's actually out of your head and on paper or on a document, uh, it's just it's not something you have to mess with anymore. It's uh, it, it's out of your head. Like it just makes life a lot easier and helps you process things a lot uh, smoother. Which is why I, I still keep a pretty regular journal. Which, by the way, I just recently moved to uh, online. Actually, I do it in a in a Word document because it's easier. Like, it just I don't know. It's it takes a long time to just sit there and write by hand a page or two. Even though I like that better, I was just noticing that I wasn't journaling as much because of that because it would just take so long. And so I switched to doing it on a Word document, and so it's searchable. Um, <laughs> I can read my writing. And it's just, I can type very, very quickly. So I've been actually a lot more consistent. That's been a good switch for me. But write these, negatives belie these negative beliefs down and just stare at them for a moment. And that's the, that's the point where the first time I did this, I remember getting a little bit emotional because I don't know, there's something about it. It's, it almost awakens in, in you this idea of like, there, there's this concept. I know Jordan Peterson talks about this a lot. We are very, very good at telling other people what they should do and knowing what other people should do for their own good, right? Like a pet or a best friend or a family member, like you have all sorts of ideas on, <laughs> you could just look at them and be like, no, you definitely should not be doing that. You should go do this. Um, and, and we're good at that, but we're very poor at recognizing that for ourselves. And so a great way to understand what you should and shouldn't be doing at the moment is to think in terms of you're somebody else looking at yourself as like a friend or a family member, what would you, you know, step outside your body for a second? What is the best decision for you here? I, I don't know. It's a little mental exercise that 
it really works. It, it helps me a lot. And this sort of brings that into focus, this idea you write down these limiting b- beliefs and it's like, like, holy cow, Kylan, like you, that is some negative stuff you're thinking right there. And it's just not healthy at all. And there was something that clicked in my my mind and those negative beliefs I wrote down, you, you do see those start to diminish because I don't know, there's something about it that just makes it really real. And it would be like, it would be like your son or daughter or family member, or best friend, somebody you really love and care about honestly telling you how crappy they think they are in that situation. You're just like that. That's freaking ridiculous. How could you believe that about yourself? <laughs> right. And this exercise helps you do that for yourself. Really. I, I don't know. Just go, just go try it. You'll be pretty surprised. I think at the results and there's a power in that, um, writing it down and being very honest with yourself, it, it helps you con- come to terms a little bit more and, and really deal with that. So, um, yeah, that's, so as far as books I'm reading, that's, I think where this all started. Um, and then I got more books. I got, uh, a book on it's <laughs> mergers and acquisitions for dummies. Um, because I'm kind of in the middle of that right now. And yeah, a lot of it is definitely very self-explanatory, just, um, really, easy to understand stuff that I skip over, but there's some good kind of nuggets of wisdom and information in there. Um, I got another one. Oh, and I got another one on how to evaluate and purchase websites or online properties, digital assets, that sort of thing. Uh, cause, cause I'm doing a lot of that right now. I think a couple episodes ago I talked about, um, where a lot of the businesses I'm involved in are at, and one of them is called pure motion uh, which is a, a startup. We're building a basically a technology platform for brands and marketers uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. And there's a lot a lot more to that. But you know we're a ways down the road in terms of building a team, getting great partners together, ideating the project, getting all the technical specs figured out, um, website, social media, all that stuff. Uh, but the project is still sitting unfunded, so it's kind of been at a bit of a standstill. And instead, our efforts have shifted towards <laughs> funding it, basically. And the best way to do that uh, that we found is by rolling up a bunch of existing businesses, cash flowing businesses, um, getting those under a letter of intent, which basically means we we plan to buy them from their current owners, and then raising money from investors to buy those businesses. And then obviously with the proceeds from that buy the businesses, so they're ours, and then use a portion of those proceeds as well, as well as the cash flow from the businesses we buy to fund the pure motion platform. So hopefully that, that, uh, that kind of makes sense. But basically what I'm doing day in and day out right now is deal flow. I'm just looking for a bunch of online businesses to buy. Um, and so it's, it's a great process. You know, I've, I flipped houses before, um, <laughs> every time using other people's money and it's always been profitable for me. And so I feel like I've got a natural, uh, knack, you know, with, with, with this stuff, it comes pretty naturally to me. And a lot of the me- mechanics of this are the same, but looking at a house that you're about to buy and figuring out how to like, what's that worth. And after you buy it, what can you do to I'll fix it up and make it better, you know, make it cash flow better as a rental property or uh, up the value to where you can sell it for more than you bought it for. Um, you know, there's a lot involved in that. And it's very different from real estate to uh, like, like physical real estate to online real estate. And so just learning about all that is fascinating stuff for me. And again, it's it's all just in time learning, guys. I am con- every day I am constantly, it feels like I'm in over my head just trying to figure stuff out. And because of that, I like, yeah, sure. I'm making a lot of mistakes and maybe not progressing as fast as I would like to at points, but, uh, I am just growing exponentially in my knowledge and my abilities, my skill set, And, uh, it, it's just amazing. And it's all through just in time learning. The very reason I'm here doing what I'm doing now is all a result of, just in time learning, always learning in the context of achieving a goal and just, just figuring out what is that next step 
learn what that takes and then go and do it and then figure out the next step. Don't get caught up in the weeds thinking 10 steps down the road because most likely uh, it's not going to be anything like you're thinking. (laughs) Um, Stuff just changes so fast. So um, that actually transitions well into something else I wanted to talk about, which is uh, actually a comment in the SD Facebook group. Um, So somebody said, uh, and I might just read this whole um, exchange here because it's very, very good. Um, so Shahan, I think, is it pronounced? Shahan? I don't know. Sorry if uh, I pronounced that wrong, but Shahan said, a question I've been debating with myself. I love being a jack of all trades. I have too many interests to be bound to one study, but what is the best way to enter the workforce when we as college dropouts can't claim certification slash high proficiency in one particular field? Jack of all trades, will be the most suitable to lead and run a show, but how can a jack of all trades get to the point? Um, so this is a great question <laughs> that I, I get quite a bit and it hits close to home because I've, you know, the, the saying is like jack of all trades, master of none. And I've, I've always called myself a jack of all trades, master of a few. And uh, yeah, it hits close to home because that's the last decade of my life has been moving from industry to industry, job to job. You know, I think at this point, yeah, I've just, I've just done so many things. And to where I really am a, a jack of all trades at this point, and it makes me very uh, versatile and adaptable to different circumstances. Um, and he points that out here uh, as a... Let me see here. Yeah. As a a strength, uh, Jack of all trades will be the most suitable to lead and run a show, which, uh, I mean, I I can speak to that uh, because honestly, I've used my (laughs) Jack of all trades degree, quote unquote, to lead and, and run things because you can kind of plug and play wherever and understand a lot of different things. You're not so specialized that you're just completely um, uh, over, you're just completely overwhelmed by all the other requirements of accomplishing something. Um, and even when I think back to being in buds and, and training with these seals, just being in the military, like I was, I was, I was middle of the pack pretty consistently. And I know, I know there's all sorts of debate between, I mean, one of the sayings there is if you're not, if you're not first, you're last and, and second place is just the first loser and stuff. And so everybody looks to, it tries to be the winner. Um, there's a lot of debate there, but at the end of the day, you're just trying to get through all the training that they throw at you. And, and they're, they're throwing so much at you that being, really adaptable and being able to do a lot of things pretty well, (laughs) not like specialized in any one thing is really a strength. And I, I, I realized that in that training, you know, I was never, well, there was a few times, but I was never consistently leading the pack and I was never consistently lagging behind, but I was solid in the middle of the pack, just a good solid, uh, trainee. And it was because I was I was just pretty good at everything: uh, push ups, pull ups, swimming, running, uh, studying technical stuff. Um, yeah, all all the technical stuff they had us do. Uh, I I could just I could pretty much take whatever they threw at me and do it well, right? But there were other guys that you know, like there were guys that could do twenty more pull ups than like the next best guy. Uh, there were guys that like, they were just swimmers. Like that was it, but they were terrible, terrible runners. Or there were guys that were really, really good runner, runners. But when it came to any body weight stuff, like push ups, pull ups, sit ups, uh, they were just absolute crap. And those guys, it's like, yeah, they won in a particular evolution or training exercise we might do. Uh, if their strength is like swimming and they're highly specialized there, like they would win, they would dominate. Sure. But they're throwing so many different scenarios at you, you're never, (laughs) they would just completely lose and get utterly destroyed in other evolutions. Whereas me, 
like I never was, I never stood out as a, as like an amazing winner in any one thing, but I never stood out as like a, a, a loser or really anybody that lagged behind. And I, I remember finding out that that is, that's kind of what they look for because you're being trained as a, like as a special operative, you're being trained as a unconventional warrior, uh, which is what really attracted me to, to the SEALs in the first place. Um, again, it's that successful dropout mentality. It's like the military is so institutionalized uh, and, you know, you can't even like go to the bathroom without asking for permission that just anything unconventional is what drew me towards it. And that's, that's what they teach you as a special operative. And as that type of warrior, you're, you're in situations where you never know, you never know what's going to happen. And there's going to be multiple things thrown at you all the time. And you've got to be able to react and do well in a ton of different and varied experience, uh, uh, yeah, experiences, um, or situations. So I, I think he's correct here when he points out that it, like it, it can really be, uh, a strength. Um, <laughs> having said that, I have I have a lot of friends that are not so much a jack of all trades, but have really specialized in a couple different things from an early age, and they are doing very very well. In fact, a lot of them are doing better than even I am at this point, and and they're like a lot of them are younger than me, and so there's a lot to be said um, for you know I'm thinking of a few different individuals who you know, started specific businesses and specific niches, uh, back in their late teens. And now, you know, almost a decade later, they are just killing it because they have just dominated that particular field. Right. And so there, there's a lot of value to that where I have not, I can't say that I've particularly dominated maybe the the dropout scene. We can say that, <laughs> but besides that, I can't say I've, I've dominated any particular field. But I've done well in a variety of different uh, areas. So it it just depends. And my my um, adaptability and the this skill of being a jack of all trades has allowed me to build and and lead organizations really well. And if you ask, if you ask any of like my employees, any of my staff or anything like that, they'll tell you like they, they typically want, like sometimes like in micromanage and like they hate that. And so they typically want me to, to not do that because I, like most of them understand these particular fields a lot better than I do. All I know is I understand enough of what they're doing to to, uh, you know, get what's going on and understand how it fits into the bigger picture and kind of generally what needs to happen and encourage them to do that. Um, and I also understand just the, the big picture and how all these different things, uh, work together. So, um, so Terrell in response to that said, being a jack of all trades doesn't mean you can't master a few. Very true. Uh, A mentor, actually two of them independently, recently recommended becoming the very best in the world at one particular thing. For example, I plan to become the expert in authentication and membership sites for the Flask web framework. (laughs) I have no idea what that is. If this is too narrow, I can expand later, but this narrow focus will make me a big fish in a very small pond. Uh, So that that's great. And and I agree with that too. Um, you can be, that's why I say I'm a jack of all trades, master of a few. Uh, I would say those few might, might be, uh, leadership, for example, I would say one would honestly be, I could say one would be building community. Uh, another would be like specific, really specific, like WordPress. I'm gotten very, very good with building WordPress sites and now, uh, Zen Foro sites, which is a particular, uh, forum software. Uh, so sure, you know, or, or playing drums, um, again, so it doesn't mean you can't, you can't, uh, master a few. In fact, I do, I do just think that that's like the best scenario. Like, uh, no, I take that back. I really do take that back. I, I have such a hard time believing there's just one way to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, like, look, if you're listening to this and, you have a lot of different interests and you're not sure which one to pursue now, 
maybe pick two of them. I would say three is even a little much. Maybe pick two of them and just go hard at two of them. And if for some reason you just decide, and again, you know, it depends on what age you are and kind of where you are in life. If you're really young, um, this is a good time for you to really explore and search what are your interests, what are your natural curiosities, what do you really enjoy doing, and start with a couple of them. And if you don't like one, uh, move to a different interest, move somewhere else. Keep in mind there's going to be some sacrifice there. If you start down one particular path, you're going to earn a lot of uh, what I call career capital in that path. So this will be relationships and experience and different uh, uh, skills and um, other like, I don't know, you name it. Like you will acquire things heading down this particular path. And if you decide, ah, this isn't for me and you switch to another path, maybe it's a different industry, a different niche, a different type of business, a different uh, type of job. A lot of the time you have to start from scratch or start, you know, you take a couple steps back in terms of your career capital and you have to sort of build that up again. And this is why people that start, say, a particular business very early on and they stay in that business for a couple decades, after a couple decades have gone by, they've built like a nine figure company because they have just dominated that spot and they just have this rolling, compounding career capital. Uh, whereas if they switched a couple times through, they may have to start over. Now there's some career capital, I think that, um, translates over, you know, to across kind of bridges, certain industries and interests and, uh, niches and stuff. But, uh, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so again, like there's nothing wrong with experimenting. I went down that path. I've done, you know, built multiple businesses in multiple industries, pursued multiple things, and I, I am really proud of my, my life. Um, I'm really proud to say that I, I don't, I don't regret anything. And I can look back and truthfully say I have tried and tasted and tested and, or accomplished or failed at everything I've ever wanted to do. And that's a really, really good feeling. Some of you listening may be drawn to just one particular path, and I think I think that's fantastic. Like you d- dominate that, uh, <laughs> it become that that uh, become that big fish, you know. Um, and maybe it'll be a mix of both. You may start by pursuing several different things until you find like, okay, this one thing, this is what I am doing for at least the next couple decades. Keep in mind, life is a lot longer than than you think. I mean, time does go by fast. Like the older you get, that's pretty sure scientifically proven, but still there's, there's a lot of years packed into your life. And so I think another thing Tony Robbins says is we tend to underestimate or we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in a year, but we grossly underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. And it is very, very true. I, I just look back five years ago in my life and I just, like, I never thought I would be here, honestly, like so much has happened. And so Keep in mind, there are, you know, decades to look forward to in your life where you you could switch to something completely different every decade and, you know, for 10 years work on that thing and build it into something really, really substantial. Um, you're not just stuck with any one thing uh, for the rest of your life. I'm saying the word thing a lot, but <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I don't think it's an either or, guys. I, I I really don't. I think it depends on yourself. You have to know yourself. Uh, what do you really want out of life? Um, so continuing here, uh, Shihan says, definitely let me know. Oh, I replied and said I should make an episode on this, which I am. Uh, he said, definitely let me know if you released that or already released it. Um, Just wanted to voice a fear slash question that a lot of dropouts probably have right now. I'm thinking that what it boils down to is we as dropouts made our decision to leave school, take a different path than others. Um, We aren't following the traditional pipeline, so we can't use traditional methods to find our place in society. We left school for a goal, and we have to accept that this goal will take time, whether it be time to master a skill or time to create our own value or degree. And that's, I think that's dead on. There's there's a lot of wisdom there. Uh, And then Terrell replied to that and said, 
uh, quote, Jack of all trades will be the best suitable to lead and run the show, but how can a Jack of all trades get to the point? Always quoting from earlier. And he just said, you can always start your own show. (laughs) Uh, Nobody ever said it would be easy to be a successful dropout. Creating value is work. Um, And I would flip that around. I'd say great work is creating value everywhere. And that's the, at the, at the end of the day, like that's what it all, it's all about. Like whatever you pursue, learn how to create great value for others and you'll have no problem landing a job. You'll have no problem building a profitable business. Uh, You should be, you should always be in this mindset of like, what, what do other people want and how can I give it to them? Because there will be no end to the benefits that will come to you uh, if that's the case. Um, So again, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I think what he's asking here is, is, since we're successful dropouts and we've stepped off the conveyor belt, we can't follow the traditional paths that society takes that people take in society to say, get a job. Um, but honestly, those are crap anyways. Like talk to any employer, talk to an employer who's looking, uh, for somebody with, um, a communications degree, let's say like a degree, a a degree in communications. Um, just because that person has a degree in communications and sure you might think, Oh, that's their trade. Like they're, they're focused on that. Like that's, that's their thing. And now they can have a, have a guaranteed job in that area. That's definitely not the case. Um, because that doesn't mean they can write. doesn't mean they can actually communicate well, uh, most likely. And I just hear this from so many employers, they have to almost deprogram like a D school that person when they're, hired because it's just it, it's not the way that the real world operates and that person still needs a lot of real world uh, e- experience and so i don't think that that person who got a degree in communications especially where with where the world's headed and where employment's headed what employ employers are starting to think i don't think that person has really that much of an advantage over you if you're a successful dropout wanting to work a job at like a as a journalist or something because it's all about getting people what they want think about what that employer wants he wants somebody that can come on join the team and provide immediate value and get them results he wants somebody that can if if you're going to be a journalist that can write really well find the best stories and create ultimately create a lot of engagement and get more eyes on their uh, paper or website or, or whatever, um, because that just means more money. So at the end of the day, if you can find another way to prove that you can get them what they want, which is more eyeballs on, <laughs> on their publication, uh, then, then you definitely have that job over the person that just has the, the degree. And there's a million ways to do that. I, and I think one of the best ways is to start a personal website and start creating content. And I, and I know we're talking about, you know, communications and journalism and stuff right now as the specific example, but everybody should do this. Everybody should learn how to communicate and to provide valuable uh, content, meaningful, valuable and meaningful content to people. And I think one of the best ways to do that is by building a personal website and starting a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel, or I don't know, some art or something that you're creating consistently that gives, provides value and joy to others. Um, and this is something Praxis preaches too. Uh, with with all of their participants, everybody starts a website and everybody commits to blogging uh, for 30 days straight, writing every single day for 30 days straight. And there is nothing like this skill, <laughs> like a well-developed skill to um, to communicate with other people. And so something like that, you know, if you had that, you show that to an employer, um, you're you're hired over the person who just has a degree. Um, because you're actually producing results. And if, if you're actually writing well and communicating well, producing valuable content, people are listening to you and you've got readership, you've got eyeballs on your site, you know, you can bring that to them and, and you've show, you've proved that you can get them, that employer, what they want. And so it's just, it's, it's, uh, again, I think 
a really limiting belief that some of you guys have is that you are somehow disadvantaged because you don't have have a degree. Um, it, that's just not the case at all. You just have to be a little bit more creative and, you know, think outside the box a little. And it's really, that's not even anything creative. Go out and go get the experiences that school claims to prepare you for, but doesn't. Go out and start getting those experiences and find a way to log those. Find a way to generate some sort of value that you can demonstrate to others through those. Um, don't think about a re- resumes are crap, but think about just a better version of a resume. Uh, we have a couple posts actually in the forum where people have posted their personal pitch decks, and this this showcases. And the, you know these people are young; they're seventeen, uh, between seventeen and twenty years old. Their, their personal pitch decks where it's like, yeah, it's a picture of them, all this stuff, and maybe some of their hobbies, stuff like that. But actual listing actual projects they've accomplished, um, real world experience and skills that they have, and even kind of a breakdown of like their uh, particular skill set and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, these things are powerful, and it goes way, way, way beyond a resume. And... Um, and so again, yeah, I just, I would not have, I would not have that mindset. I have... I have had more opportunities as the result of, of not having a degree um, because of the way I've, I've went about things than if I than I think I would if I would have uh, gone and earned a, a degree and just tried going through some of the traditional pipelines. Um, honestly, it's caused me to be a lot more creative and and uh, in some ways fail a lot more. But at the end of the day, that just it makes me more experienced, more tempered, and and just overall more um, prepared for, I guess, the world and able to provide um, value. And again, it's it, so much of it has, has come down to just in time learning. And uh, you just, yeah, there, there's nothing like that. So hopefully that helps. Um, answer that question if you had it. Again, we're, we're creating something called the Successful Dropout Bible, and this question is definitely going to be in it, and we'll have uh, a more concise answer in there with um, hopefully some specific resources and uh, people that we can point you to. And uh, yeah, so, so I'm working on that with uh, Sam Watt right now, who is uh, my uh, new partner in, in Successful Dropout and sort of help, helping things continue to move along here. Um, yeah, and with that, I think I am going to sign off. So uh, you guys know the drill. Stay hungry. Stay foolish. <laughs>